Hello. Uh, I saw a video by um, Peter Parker a few uh, weeks back regarding a topic of uh, whether modern books today will be worth something more down the road. And I thought that was an interesting question and topic. Uh, you know, for sure, uh, I don't know. So let's get that right out there. Uh, I don't know, but for something to go up in value in the future, there has to be some kind of demand for them. Whatever drive that demand is a big question mark, right? Because uh, if uh, I buy a book today, and 10, 15 years from now, if a new collector don't care to sort out the copy I bought today, then the demand is flat. There is no real demand that drive up the 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 price of that book. Okay, so that that's about as simplistic as I can make the example, you know, and. Um, to, to ties in that question, I had a few discussions with other collectors about you know the rule of twenty five um, and how that has some truth, but that does not mean that you know something if something is twenty five years old, it become a collectible item. You know, certain certainly some things can become collectible items right away, you know, when you're talking about things like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle number one, or even like The Walking Dead number one, the popularity of those items came pretty quickly, and the demand outstripped the supplies fairly quickly that drive up the demand right away. And then if you go back to, you know, uh, the Bronze Age, no doubt, Wolverine, Hulk 181, Hulk 181. Uh, that book had had great demand and steady demand over the past few decades, right? Because, sure, when the book come out, everyone love it, but as new collectors enter into the hobby, uh, in the 80s with the emergence of the new X-Men that drive the demand and then even the newer collector that come into the hobby in the 90s you know the, the popularity of Wolverine was on the rise uh, right from the start so with that kind of rise in popularity the demand for Hulk 181 keep going up and thus drive up the value if you fast forward that to today, well, you fast forward that to say the 90s, the m most notable character introduction would be um, Deadpool, right? The New Mutant 98, although not in the same caliber as. Uh, Hope 181 as far as immediate popularity there was a slow build of popularity of uh, Deadpool as newer collector entered into the market in the past 10 years certainly they sought out New Mutant 98 more and more and that uh, create the rise in value of New Mutant 98 because uh, you know certainly the demand for that book and that character was I don't think anything special if it was certainly I don't see why Marvel would have cancelled the title you know, Deadpool became much more popular many years later uh, so if you fast forward that to today you know, they, for anything for anything that we bought, like that came out today, 
my, in my opinion, for it to be worth something more um, 10, 20, 30 years down the road, a lot of it likely will have to depend on where the hobby is, which I don't have a crystal ball, so I don't know what the hobby will be like in 20 years. Hopefully, I will still be around to see what it will evolve to. Um, but you know, you know, the funny thing is, you know, back in the eighties, a lot of the stuff that we bought, my generation bought, like uh, for those that bought, you know, Rocket Raccoon first appearance in the Hulk, uh, and many other things, we would never dream. Well, at least I never dreamed that they could be worth in the hundreds of dollars today and without the involvement with the movies who knows they will still be worth almost to nothing right I mean, it, it's the demand the value of those books in the 80s and 90s blow up today in the past few years more so because of the, the, the hype, the demand, and the speculation that came with the movies. Who knows what those books would be without the movies involvement. So, you know, um, so I don't know, you know, I mean, when, when I look at books like, uh, I don't have the book with me, but, you know, I had, I was going to pull out a bunch of books I bought in the 80s and 90s that I thought was worthless back then. But now, for some reason, it's worth a, a good amount of money, especially if they are in the nine, six, nine, eight range. You know, it has all. It all has to do with uh, the movies. You know, look at X Factor Five, X Factor Six with the uh, Apocalypse. Two years ago, you couldn't give away those books for five dollars or three dollars. And all of a sudden, the past six months with uh, the rumors with the movies, now it's a sixty-dollar book. You know, so to answer uh, Peter Parker' question, you know, uh, I don't know what the demand will come from in twenty or thirty years to drive the value of the, the moderns today, but we will see. You know, I. I, I don't know, you know, I mean, none of us was able to see that in the 80s and 90s. Uh, many people uh, mis-speculate in the 90s, you know, we certainly didn't go out there and buy a short box full of X-Men, X-Factor 5 or X-Factor 6. More likely, the people that speculate bought a box full of uh, Spawn number 1. Or X Force them on, <laughs> so you know, but that's what make the market. Uh, that, that's what makes speculation fun. Is that you know sometimes it's a hit or miss. That's my two cents as far as uh, this topic. Anyhow, thanks for watching.